Hello folks, um, I've recently received some requests um, from this video, the how to make a minigame clock on basically just a walkthrough of me putting it together. Um, and I don't see why I can't do that. Um, so if it helps people get this system in, I don't see why not. So the first thing I'm going to do is say go to the other video and watch that if you have them. If you have understanding of command blocks, if you have a strong enough understanding, that video should be enough for you to get the system running on your own. Um, however, if that's not the case, then that's what we're here for. Um, you're still going to want to go to this video as the first step, because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy all the commands, because why type out something like this when you can literally copy-paste it when I've given it to you right here? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a notepad. Drag all the way to get all A through C commands. Here's notepad and paste. And we see we have all the commands here. So next we'll load into Minecraft. Um, you'll load up whichever world you want. I'm going to create a new world so that we're tar starting totally from scratch here. So I'm going to do creative, super flat, abstractions. Oh, and I've just failed there. Let's do this again. There we go. Now that we've got our world building, we can make this a little bit bigger. Cool. Now we have a nice big world. I'm going to just run some quick things here. I want to disable the daylight cycle. Do daylight cycle false and do um, spawning false. All right, now we have a nice big empty world uh, with a lot of slimes. Um, so we can run into here. So now that I've copied all the commands, it's not as simple as just copying them all over into Minecraft, but that's what we do at first here. So these um, setup commands. These first six commands are all things that we're going to run in the command line and not in a command block. So I'm going to first copy this one. There we go. So now I have a timer score objective. We're creating objectives here at first. So timer score. Copy, paste the same thing for minutes. Timer minutes. And timer seconds. There we go. Now we have a whole bunch of variables that we can put numbers into. Next, we want to create the boss bar. This is what will actually show up on the player screen. Um, with the boss bar command, the ID um, allows you to have different command blocks, uh, not command blocks, different best bars all over the place. Um, however, it has to be a, a number value. So I just do one because there's no other, no other boss bars in this world at all. There we go. Now we have a bus custom boss bar with the name of um, bracket zero colon zero bracket. Then if we do this command here, it will make the boss bar visible to every player. Click that and now it's at the top. Cool. We have a boss bar with some numbers. It's good. And then I want to set the max value to 300. Um, 300 is not a number you need. So 300 is where if you wanted to have a five minute clock, you need to convert those minutes into seconds and that needs to be your max value. So in this case, if this is a five minute clock, you need to have a max of 300 because 300 seconds is five. You know, if you had 600, then that would be 10 minutes. But we're just gonna do five minutes for now and do some stuff with it later. Cool. Now we have our bus bar with all its variables set. Now, Next thing we can do is get a command block. So that's going to be game mode, not game mode. Uh, you have to forgive me. I've been out all day watching trains and playing with trains, so I'm exhausted. So we're going to need to get give myself a command block. There we go. Now I have a command block. If I set it down, this is going to be an impulse command block. Um, we have three different options for command blocks there. There is chain and repeat blocks. Um, in this specific system, we don't actually use repeat blocks at all. Um, but the first one we're using is just an impulse. So we go back over here. 
we're going to do set block, comma one, error. So what this does is whenever this command block is activated, it's going to set error. So what I'm going to do first is do some test blocks because we might have the direction wrong. If I place this here, you'll note that this block disappeared instead of the redstone block. And that's because this one is in the wrong position. It can either be one, negative one, or on the z-axis, one or negative one. Now I'm just going to try one, and you'll note that block disappeared, which means I need to do negative one. So now, whenever I place the redstone block, it'll disappear again. This allows me to do a different command elsewhere to place the redstone block, and it will always remove the block so that I can do it again later without any issues. Cool. Piece of cake. So now, whenever I'm activating that block, we want to do some chain blocks after it with these commands. This is these commands. There we go. So if I drag this. Cool. So we'll place the command block down, and I'm going to change it to chain. I'm also going to keep it unconditional, because that doesn't matter for this system. And then I'm going to turn needs redstone to always active, because I don't need redstone to activate this. Redstone is used to activate this. So I'm going to just do three of those, because that's really simple. I'm going to copy one. There we go. Two. Three. There we go. Now you'll notice when I placed that, it didn't do anything to the boss bar up top, but it set some variables at the bottom to 300, 5, and 0. And it does it over and over again. So if I was to change those, they would go back to that number. So now we want to make it so that the actual visual change happens. And to do that, I'm going to set the boss bar's name to a whole bunch of data. Um, so this is probably one of the hardest things to understand with this system. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm getting a scoreboard command. If you can see my mouse there, scoreboard command. I'm getting the name of the entity that has the score, which I've set timer entity, as you can see up here. Get timer entity. I'm getting the scoreboard objective, um, which I've set to timer minutes. Then I'm just getting some normal text, which is colon, and then timer entity objective timer seconds, where I'm doing the same thing, but with seconds instead of minutes. So you don't need to type all that out. Instead, we're just gonna copy. Find my mouse, there we go. One, two, three, four, paste. Should go in just fine. Now, if we run it again, you'll notice that our um, numbers at the top there have updated to five colon zero instead of zero colon zero. However, the bar still hasn't moved, so we want to do that, and that's just going to be this last one. Um, I explain execute a little bit better in the other video. On this one, I'm just trying to show you how to copy-paste these things in, because that's really all you need to do is copy-paste. That's kind of how I planned the system to be built. Um, so there we go. Now we copy-paste. Now if I do this, it fills up all the way to the max. Cool. So now, now that we can set the timer to its max values, we want to actually start ticking it down as time goes on. So we're going to do a 442 repeater clock. Um, the reason I do that is just because um, I'm aware that that value is one second. So 442, which means this, that this redstone dust will always be active every, every second. So if I throw a torch here for half a second to turn it on and now every second this is running so I don't want this to be running all the time because once I put my command blocks here I don't want them always always ticking down sometimes I want to have control over the clock so the first thing to do is we put another redstone torch uh, redstone comparator comparator repeater oh I'm tired redstone repeater here and you'll note that every time I place a redstone block here to activate this it will put this nice little bedrock choke on it and that prevents the value from changing you'll note that if it's on it keeps the system on and if it's off if 
I can get it off. There we go. It'll stay off. Um, it really doesn't matter if it's on and off for us because the impulse will only ever run once. If this was a repeat command block, that would also need a redstone. As long as it was on, it would keep repeating. But we just need this system for an impulse. So our first impulse is that we're going to do basically the same command we just copied in with the execute, but this time we're also going to take the timer entity timer score value and re subtract one from it. So we're basically subtracting one and also putting whatever the value is of timer score into our, our boss bar at the top. So if I just run this real quick, It's hard to notice, but you can see at the top right there that the bar is starting to slowly go down. However, our numbers at the top are still not updating, so we need to work with that. So we'll put that down, reset that, and that gives us to our next command. So the, every second, we want to remove one from timer seconds value. Okay. Um, now I would, I would run it again, however, we aren't visually updating the name of that yet. So we're not actually going to notice anything. That comes down here, um, right here. We'll come back to that. But first, we want to do these two commands. These are also execute ifs. However, these ones only run if timer seconds is less than negative one, or less than and equal to negative one. So basically, if it's if if it's zero, one, two, three, anything higher than negative one. It, these command blocks aren't going to ever do anything. However, if it is negative one, it will do something. And you'll note that the first thing we do is we reduce one from minutes, because when we hit zero on the second bar, we want to reduce a minute. But then we also want to reset our seconds, and that's what the second command is, which resets seconds back to, um, to 59. And because we're using zero, we don't need 60. If that makes sense, because you'd never see you'd never see five colon sixty on a clock, you would see four colon fifty nine or six colon zero zero. So we can copy these over. Okay, one, two. Um, yep, there we go. Timer minutes, timer seconds. That still doesn't update the visuals. So now we're going to do this. There we go. And you'll note that this command is literally just this command all over again. So now we want to run our clock. You'll notice that the, um, the numbers at the top change as well. So you'll notice it slowly starts ticking down. I'm not going to run this through the entire way, um, but I hope you get the point. So we pop over here. Uh, there's one more command at the bottom here. Execute if, if timer score is negative one. So instead of seconds, instead of timer seconds, we're checking timer score, which is our entire clock in seconds. So we could also test timer minutes. So if timer minutes is less than zero or le uh, less than or equal to negative one, um, we could do that as well. However, I found it easier um, to just, because of how I do um, this boss bar stuff, not boss bar, not that one. Um, because of how I do this command, I found it easier to use timer score to keep track overall. Um, there's definitely some efficiencies you can add to the system, but this should do its job for what you need. Um, so let's run this last command when it runs, when it hits negative one. So when we're all the way down to zero minutes and zero seconds, we're going to set a block at X, Y, Z, and we're going to set redstone block. And basically what that means is, so notice how it's mad here because these are not number values. But basically when this runs, we want to set this redstone block. So if I go into my F3 menu, F3 is how you open this menu, you'll notice on the right side that I have a target block. So it says target block, it's coordinates, it's block type, command block, redstone, grass. What I want to know is this block's position, which is 65, 4, 1, 3, 3. So, sixty-five, four, 
one three three. I just want to go double check that real quick. 654133. 654133. Cool. So this means that when the timer reaches zero, this will activate the choke and the timer will no longer start ticking. Now, I'm not going to go all the way through five minutes of this running. Um, I hope that's clear enough that you understand that this behaves in a way that will stop the clock. So I'm going to stop the clock myself. Now, there is two other things that we can do that um, weren't mentioned in the original video. These are kind of extra things. This is the main function of that video was to try and teach these two clock functions. How you use them is 100% up to you. Um, I know it's possible to convert it into a timer. So if you wanted to time someone on how long it takes them to do something, um, you can basically do the opposite. That is um, how to do that is in the command. It's in the comments. Sorry, tired again. Uh, is in the comments of that first video. Um, however, in here I just want to show two things that I think some of you could find helpful. Um, the first is activating the command block system. So let's see. Um, yeah, let's do that one then. So I'm going to just run real quick. Bus bar set one players. Okay, I've made the boss bar disappear. So now when the player starts your mini game, so let's say you have a pressure plate or a different command system or something that activates your command blocks. Um, we want to make the timer reappear and also start it ticking down. And that's actually pretty busy. So what we're gonna do is if we remember our coordinates here, 65, 4, 1, 3, 3, we're going to do set block 65, 4, 1, 3, 3, and I'm going to set air. This means that when this command block gets run, when this pressure point gets clicked on, this redstone block will disappear and the timer will start kicking down. The other thing I want to do is actually run um, a command from the beginning. So if we go up back up to A, we have... Boss bar set Minecraft one players at all. That makes the boss bar visible. So I'm going to copy that and put that in this chain block without the W. There we go. So now let's just reset it real quick. There we go. Now when I press the pressure plate or whatever you have to activate the system, the boss bar should reappear on all the players HUD and start ticking down. So we click. You'll note that it showed up. You'll note that this redstone block disappeared and it's ticking down. Perfect. I'm going to just stop it again because that's decent. And then the last thing I want to do is that when it reaches zero, I just want it to disappear again and run its own reset function. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this command where I'm setting error. I'm going to copy it and I'll place it and have it set redstone block. Now, when I run the timer, it will all, always keep resetting itself right now because of how I just set that command. What I want to do is I want to steal my execute. So this part of the command, I'm going to copy and paste that, and I'm just going to come over here and go down at the bottom. So this part of the command, execute if timer score matches negative one. This is what I want to put in the front of these commands so that it only runs the command when the clock is at the very end. So we go back in, done. I'm going to come back to the front. I don't need this. And I'm just going to paste that back in and do a space bar. So there we go. Now when timer score matches negative one, I'm going to run set block, comma, 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 negative one, Minecraft, redstone block. And what that will do is that'll place a redstone block right here and reset all the values. Finally, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Matches negative one run, but then I'm going to run my command that makes the, um, the command block appear for players. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make it disappear. So if I go to here, get rid of that colon. No, that's not a colon, but run boss bar set Minecraft one players at all. Um, at all is what's going to make it appear. If I keep it blank, it will clear all the players from the command block and basically make it disappear. So now if I start the command block, there we go, we're running. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little here and do, um, so I'm going to copy my timer score va um, setter, and I'm going to set this, not here, I'm going to set this to just 10, so that in 10 seconds it ends. So you'll note the boss bar updates for three, two, one. I wasn't perfectly on point there, but okay, here's something I did wrong. Um, you'll note I did stop the timer correctly. However, this redstone block did not go in the spot I wanted it to. Ah, because I didn't change the coordinates. That is my mistake. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you make mistakes. That's just process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this block, 7, 4, 4, 1, 3, 3. I'm going to copy that. There we go. Here, I'm going to, where I was having those, um, those squigglies, I'm going to replace that with the numbers. There we go. You'll note it deleted the command block I have here, so I have to recreate that one. But that one was pretty simple. So I can do copy my run command so that it only runs at the end. There we go, copy, paste, run. And then we're just running this command. Get rid of that. And get rid of at all at the end. Done. Double check that this is still that so that I'm not going to just do the same mistake over again. If I run the reset progress, turn it on. Now I'm going to run the same thing and just set it to 10. I'm going to do it at 50 here. Boom. So now when we hit 430, the system should have finished. Um, fingers, uh, quotation marks there because we faking the finish. And there we go. Um, you'll note that the timer stopped and disappeared. Um, you'll also notice the commands set timer score for timer entity. Um, this clearly ran based on what we saw in the in the chat log there. These commands are from the reset command and it's been renamed to 5.0. So we know the reset worked, which means if we start it again, there we go, we're at five minutes and we're counting down. And that is the, the main gist of it. Um, one other thing you can do is you can do bus bar set one and you can do it style. Um, this will add notches to the bar. So if you have six minutes or a variable of six or 10 minutes um, or even five minutes, like notch 10 is probably the best for five minutes. Um, you'll note at the pop, it'll add notches and that helps just helps guide the player and let them know, oh, this is how many seconds I have in total. So like for the five minute one here, each one of those notches represents 30 seconds. And that's, that's really it. Um, there's a lot more you can do with the system. Um, you know, if you do this matches command, you can have things happen at certain times. You can have a different timer stop when that timer ends. It's, it's kind of up to you, but um, that's really the basics of it. Um, hopefully that answers um, some of the questions I've been getting. Um, if you go to the other video, um, first I'm going to ask, please give it a like, because that really, really helps encourage me to make another. Um, I'm actually working on one for um, multiple dimension worlds. Um, nothing, nothing too fancy um, at the moment. Um, so any motivation to work on that is good motivation. Um, but also, if you need to copy the commands, that's where they are. They're in that other video. I'll link it in the description of this one. Also in that video are um, links to a download world where you can download this system basically already built up without these extra ones that I just did. So you can go literally physically play with it there and really experiment. Um, and yeah, and I think that video does a lot better explaining some of the really complex stuff. Whereas this video, um, I did just go through and show you my process for rebuilding the system whenever I want. And it's copy paste. Like if you're taking the time to type everything out yourself, um, I think you're wasting time at that point. Um, cause I have built this system for you. I have built all these copy paste commands for you to copy paste, um, as you need. 
Um, so yeah, if you use it in your map, um, I'd love to I'd love to see your map. You can feel free to link it in a comment below here. Um, I would love if you could credit me um, in some way. I would love a special thanks just for using the system, but you know, not, no requirements there. That was just something like I'd appreciate it. And I appreciate you all for watching. Thank you.